on some diagrams that I'm going to go through to help explain the answer to this question. Um, to, so to start off, I've drawn the two vectors of the airplane and also the wind speed on an XY coordinate plane. The wind speed is going north 30 degrees east. So if you were going in a north direction and then you veered off 30 degrees to the east, we would get a 30 degree angle between the vector and the vector's magnitude is 300, sorry, 35 miles per hour because that's the wind speed. Now the airplane vector I've drawn down here because the bearing, you start north um, at north and then you're going to go in a clockwise direction, 135 degrees, which comes down to this, this vector and the magnitude of that vector is 430 miles per hour because that's how fast the airplane is going. Now if we split this, these two vectors up into two different coordinate planes, we get the wind one and this middle one. And we, since we know that this angle up here is 30 degrees, we can find this bottom angle because we know a quadrant is 90 degrees. So if we do 90 minus the 30 degrees of the angle up top, we get 60 degrees for this bottom angle. And we can do the same thing with the airplane vector. We know that from, from north down to the vector is 135 degrees. And since this, again, quadrant is 90 degrees, we can subtract that out and we get that this angle down here is 45 degrees. Now, the reason why we want to do that is we want to know what the angle is between our two vectors once we put them together. So as we scroll down to this fourth picture, we've put the vectors together now. Again, not on our xy coordinate. Now, since we know that um, the, the angle from the wind vector to the 90 degree angle and from the, and the airplane vector from the 90 degree angle, and those, when we add those together, the 60 plus the 45, we get that the angle between the two is 105 degrees. And the reason why that is important is if we translate this wind vector down to the tail of the airplane vector and extend the airplane vector, we get that this angle is also 105 degrees because none of our angles change, so it ha would have to remain the same. And the reason why we want to know that is we're trying to find the angle in here between the two vectors when the vectors are attached to each other um, because that is the definition of a resultant vector. When you take the first vector and add the second vector to the tail of the first vector, you get the resultant vector, which is this red one here. And um, so we want to know this angle because it's going to help us to find that resultant vector. Now we can find this angle because this is a straight angle and a straight angle we know equals 180 degrees. So we can take 180 and subtract this 105 and that gives us 75 degrees between the two vectors. Um, now as you notice we have side angle side. We have the magnitude of the airplane, the angle between them, and then the magnitude of the uh, wind speed and using those we can use the law of cosines in order to find our x side um, which i've set up here I've, I've plugged it into the equation for the formula of law of cosines and once we calculate that we get that the magnitude of our new um, vector with the the air, of the airplane with the wind speed will be 422.3 miles per hour and that is our resultant vector that we are looking for so that's the answer to part one. Part two, we need to find the bearing of the airplane with the wind speed. And as we go to this last picture, you can find that by using the information that we've just found. So we're going to use that 75 degrees, again, that we had already found, the 35 mile per hour wind speed, and also the new um, wind, sorry, the new speed of the airplane with the wind, which was 422.3. We're going to use the law of sines here because we have an angle with the side across from it and then one other side which is across from the angle that we're looking for. Now we want to, the reason why we want to find this angle is because we, it will help us to be able to find the bearing. We'll be able to subtract and I will go through that in a second. So law of sines, plugging everything into the law of sines, um, we get sine of A over 35 equals sine of 75 over 422.3. Now, once we solve for A, we get that angle A is going to be 4.6 degrees. Now, from the very beginning, this bottom line, if you remember, is the vector 
of the um, airplane, and it was 135 degree bearing. If we subtract this angle A, we'll be able to get the bearing of the new airplane vector. And when we do that, we get 130 degrees.